is representing the Iron Bridge uh, Institute today from the College of Arts and Law. And the title of Emma's talk today is Whose Memorial Is It Anyway? Understanding the Significance of War Memorials in Contemporary Society. Okay, thank you. Not one person alive today has any living memory of the First World War. And yet, when Charlie Gilmore swung for a flag at the Cenotaph to the, during the July 2011 student protests, public reaction was so strong that one commentator suggested he should have been shot by the police. But why? Those expressing disgust have no memory of those whom the memorial was built to signify, and his actions caused no damage. It is the main aim of my research to understand the use of memorials by those many years after the events they commemorate, and to challenge the notion that memorials are only important to those with autobiographical memories of these events. To do this, I've conducted extensive field research at memorials and collected over 200 questionnaires from individuals associated with memorials, such as volunteers at the War Memorials Trust. I ask questions such as, is the continued use of construction of memorials many years after the events appropriate, such as the recent Bomber Command Memorial? And is it justified to have political protests at memorials? As you can see, memorials regularly make media headlines as acts of vandalism or disrespect are committed against them, or as they're drawn into political debate. You might remember recent protests surrounding the murder of drummer Lee Rigby. Here, English Defence League marches to lay wreaths at memorials in memory of Rigby gave a clear message that they saw these memorials to represent a white British past. Yet many disagreed with this, this interpretation, suggesting that the sacred role of a memorial should transcend political rhetoric. But haven't memorials always been revered in this way? Well, no. In fact, following the First World War, memorials regularly became sites of political protest particularly class-based disputes surrounding returning servicemen. And during the 1930s, many criticised the hypocrisy of commemorating the war to end all wars while simultaneously preparing for a second conflict. And yet, the initial analysis of my questionnaires suggests that over 95% of people today believe that memorials should transcend contemporary issues. Only two respondents commented that political protest was actually a freedom for which those listed on the memorials had died. And not one person thought it was inappropriate to continue to commemorate historic conflicts whilst also being engaged in conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan. And so I ask, as we once again to prayer to commemorate the war to end all wars, I really hope that having a greater understanding of the use of memorials within contemporary society that we can create a sustainable way to commemorate past conflicts and to protect these historic artefacts from things like this. Thank you.